From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs, Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now, in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of the demon of Rangu. Tarzan had been traveling through the middle Congo for many days, but at last his goal was within sight. Perhaps there was still time to prevent the threatened war between the people of the Punya tribe and the warriors of Rangu. But as he entered the Rangu village, his heart became heavy. The council ring was filled with warriors, and in the center, devil dancers whirled in mad abandon, shaking their juju sticks and grimacing hideously through the thick white paint that covered their savage faces. Surely this was a dance of war, and once again the Congo would be dyed with the redness of native blood. Bas! Bas! What do Ranguero? Ah, Kitako! Santa, mighty chief. It'll be a little easier to talk now. Tarzan always welcome village Rangu people. Chief always glad whole palaver with jungle lord. But why Tarzan stop dance of devil men? Because I, I know what these dances lead to. Your devil dancers whip themselves into a frenzy, and then they make the others of your tribe hysterical. I, I'm sure we can find an answer to our problem in some other way. His only way. No, no. No, there is another way. The, the problem is a simple one. Last fall, the people of the Punya tribe lent you six fine sheep. And the agreement was that you were to pay them back in kind after the lambing season. The deal is right, but... You failed to live up to your part of the agreement. The lambs were never repaid, and you have given the messengers from Punya only feeble excuses instead of their due. Rangu people not have lambs to give back. And so, in place of lambs, you prepare to send arrows and asagais into the Punya village. Sio, we not make ready for war. No, not for war. Well, then, then explain this dance and your devil masks and your fetish signs. It's to chase demon. Oh, no, but, but you, you all know better than that. The missionaries have taught you that demons do not exist. The doctor I once brought here proved that the sickness you blamed on demons came from bad drinking water. And I've often shown you... This time is demon. Come in night. Rob Rangu village. Wood for fire. Hide for clothes. Is cause demon kill lambs. We're not able to pay back punyas. I see. And this demon who kills lambs couldn't possibly be a panther or, or a lion with a fondness for fresh meat? Tarzan stay village Rangu people tonight. He see demon come like wisp of smoke, move fast like Ara, a lightning. Kill with strength of thousand demons. Well, this is the third night I've stood watching. Your demon still hasn't shown up. Is not Asabuhi yet. Oh, but it will be soon. The, the dawn's beginning to come up already. If not come tonight, come tomorrow night, sure. I'm beginning to wonder if your demon isn't merely a, a ruse to avoid paying the punyas. Ruse? As yeah, something you've made up to... It's demon. Demon strike game. On the other side of the village. Come on. I saw no one running from the camp. Never see demon. He's like spirit. Disappear. His mother poor. She hurt. The demon didn't injure her voice anyway. Great chief. Tarzan. Demon, come my him. What he steal this time? Steal, ball, plant, and plow. Oh. Wait, wait. Tr try to stop your tears for a moment and uh, tell us which way the demon went. Went that way and that way. In in two different directions? Well, that's very helpful. It does go two direction. It's big like mountain. Has four eyes, many legs. Where is her hut? Right here, behind us. Oh. The demon has many legs. It must have left some tracks here. It not leave tracks. Well, they might not have been easy to see in the cornfield or the pasture, but here in the soft clay of... There is tracks. And the woman's out the truth. Here is the outline of eight feet, four like those of a wild dog, and, and four like some sort of half-panther, half-man, with talons in place of toes. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll learn what befalls Tarzan when he pursues the demon of Rangu into the cave of the giant spiders.
Tarzan attempted to follow the tracks of the strange creature, but they disappeared in the rocky country to the north of the village. On the next night, it failed to show up at all, and twice later in the week it made quick forays, but vanished before Tarzan could even catch a glimpse of it. Now, as the Congo night descended once again, sentries took post in every nook and cranny of the village, and the vigil continued through a long and sleepless night. <laughs> the council ring. Oh, if only I'd been over there tonight. I'm not as far away as the last time. Grab second. Tarzan, we see demon's eyes. Four eyes in dark. Go this way. Come with me, all of you. You may be able to surround it. There. Dark shadow. Run toward rocks. You can't make out what it is from this distance, but it looks more like a large, low animal than a demon. It is heading for the rocks. Maybe it's cave. What, what did it steal this time? Peace antelope steak. Oh, your demon seems to have a healthy appetite. Oh, you're right. It's heading for a cave. Right right through this opening in the rocks. Come on, we'll go after it. Not going cave. No, no. All right, then I'll go alone if the men of Rangu are afraid. Me go with Tarzan. Good. I'll, I'll try to lead the way. Oh, it's much dark inside here. I can't see a thing. But I smell the presence of something. Not the scent of man nor that of an animal, but a strange combination of both. Not see demon. No, and my knife won't do any good unless we can find it. Chief brave, but not like hunt demon without see. Well, you stay right where you are. I'll look around. Not go too far away. We not know how big his cave. You can tell from the currents of air that it's pretty large. Perhaps it's only a series of... Tarzan, you find demon... There's something over in this corner, but I can't tell what it is. It sounds like a cross between a panther and a jungle wolf. I'm going to find out what it is. It's not far from me now, and I may be able to... What? It run away? Yes, but I'll catch it. I can follow the sounds of... Tarzan! Tarzan! I caught to some kind of a giant web. Web? Thick, slimy cords of something... Like the wet roots of seaweed. <laughs> Trying to cut my way out with my knife. Ah! Oh, spiders. Huge ones the size of, of giant king crabs. Help me! Not help. Our messengers of demon run for life. Oh, but you can't. They're coming at me by the dozens. They're, they're too much for me. I can't. I can't. Oh. oh. <laughs> Men keep watch for demon again tonight? See, si, oh, it's no use. Men of Rangu tired. Tarzan dead. Soon punyas make war, cause sheep we not pay back. Let demon take what it want. Maybe move village? Go other place. Demon have curse on tribe any place we go. He follow. In morning, whole shore, warriors of Rangu decide. Tarzan! What... Yes, it's... <laughs> it's Tarzan. We... Think you dead? I I am more dead than alive. It was a nightmare fighting those hairy insects. But that last night, where you are since then? Hunting for your demon. Those caves go for miles and miles, but I, I kept after it all day long. I caught a tiny glimpse of the thing once, scurrying along the ground. Later I almost caught up with him, but he, he slipped through a crack that was just about an inch too small for me. I don't know how he managed to slip through it. He? <laughs> I guess I began to think of your demon as being almost human. At any rate, it's got a mind that's more cunning than any animal I've ever met. But I haven't given up yet. I have a plan. Plan? Yes, you told me that before I came, he stole other things. But since I've been here, the only thing he's got away with has been food. And not too much of that. In the last few days, all he's managed to get was a bowl of plantain flour, a few ears of kaffir corn, and a small piece of antelope meat. Nadio. He's right. So he's probably hungry. Well, this time he's going to find a nice fat goat waiting for him in an open field. Our last goat? No, the demon won't touch it. I'll be in a tree less than 50 yards away, and I'll have my bow and a quiver full of arrows at my side. But if Tarzan misses... I'm, I'm going to grease my body from head to toe. And that way I'll be able to slip through that tiny opening to the last cave. I'll work alone this time, and I'll either come back with the demon 
No, not at all. It was a cold and moonless night, but this time Tarzan did not have long to wait. From his hiding place in the trees, he could see a shadow creeping close to the bait. Tarzan waited until the last desperate moment, and then he raised his bow, fitted an arrow, and fired. There was a howl of pain, and then the thing seemed to divide into two parts. One part seemed to hesitate for a split second. Then it joined the other and streaked for the caves with incredible speed. A speed that a weary Tarzan could not equal. The shadow disappeared into an underground chasm, and Tarzan followed. But this was a different series of caves, and Tarzan searched through them fruitlessly for what seemed like endless hours. And then from inside one of the caves, he heard a strange and surprising sound. It sounds like someone crying. Like the sobbing of a small boy. Well, it's, it's not possible. Oh, at least there's a little light coming through that small chink there. Perhaps I can see him. Oh, 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 stop, stop clawing at me. I have my knife unsheathed and I'm, I'm talking to it as though it were human. It is human. You're a small boy, aren't you? A white boy. Well, you can't tell it from lad nor from your looks, but under that filth and that greasy hide you're wearing, you are a boy. Judging by that matted hair and those claw-like nails, you've been hiding in caves for a long time. That, that still doesn't explain a lot of things about the demon. Or are you one of its victims? What? what? Are you trying to pull me somewhere? Uh, on all fours, eh? All right, I'll come with you over to that corner. Oh, a dead dog. Oh, oh, your dog. And with my arrow still buried in it. Now I understand why the demon seemed to divide itself into two parts. And I understand your tears, too. I, I'm, I'm sorry, but there's really nothing I can do for him now. Let me see. He looks as though he must have been a real thoroughbred, too, before he became wild. He's an old dog. His muzzle's very gray. And what in the... A, a chain collar still around its neck. And, and a tag. And it says, Crew. Could that be the dog's name? Ibalo. Ibalo. Well, your dog can't answer, and you can't answer, but at least I have a few things to tell the people of Rangu. the complete story. This is one half of your demon. We uh, we buried the other half back near the cave where he died. Dog always right back of boy. Boy go on all fours. That's plain four eyes, eight feet. But if he in cave many years, why just start steal our food few moons ago? Dio, tell us. Oh, he probably only migrated to this section a short time ago. He's been roaming like a jungle animal, always in quest of food and a place safe from larger animals. He was either lost in the jungle when he was an infant, or if he ever knew how to walk erect and to talk, he's long since forgotten it. What you do with thing you call boy, Tarzan? He's not a thing. I, I call a boy. He is a boy. One who's no wilder than I was when I was his age and lived among the apes. And he has the capacity for tears, too, so he's still very human. His claws will have to be cut, and he needs a good bath, a haircut, and a clean animal skin to wear, but I shall do these things for him. And I shall teach him to walk and to speak the language of other white men. Why, Tarzan? Why you do this? For his sake, and for my own. I, I shall take him to my seacoast cabin, and he shall be a son to me. I shall call him by the Swahili word for son, Moana. You go now? Yes, yes, I'm leaving. For you're now free from your demon, and you can plant your food and, and save and repay the people of Punya. And thus avert your war. Come on, Moana. Tarzan, watch out. He might insult you. No, don't do that, Moana. I know that your violence stems only from fear, but you have nothing to fear from me. You not make real boy of him. He spring on you and sleep one night. Medio, he kill you. Oh, you may be right. Perhaps the jungle has left a permanent mark upon him from which he can never recover. But I shall do everything within my power to make him normal, and only when or if the task is proved impossible... Will I take him to the mental hospital at Dakar? (laughs) 
In just a moment, the very unexpected conclusion to the story of the Demon of Rangu. Tarzan required the help of two of the Rangu's strongest warriors to hold the strange panther boy while he scrubbed away layers of filth. A tired native came to his assistance while he cut the fingernails and toenails that had become like claws. And even with four of them holding the small savage, cutting Moana's long, matted hair, and forcing him to wear the gorilla skin suit the Rangu women had made was an almost impossible task. But at last, Moana emerged as a fine-looking young white boy whose animal-like growls now seemed quite out of keeping with his appearance. But he accompanied Tarzan without too many protests until, after many days' travel, they had reached the seacoast. Oh, I know what. I'll come that way. Only it's quite a few miles further to my seacoast cabin by that path. What? Along the shore? All right. Oh, no, 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 Moana, not on all fours. Men walk on their feet. That's right. You see, it's not any harder to walk that way. No, no, Moana, let's not head in that direction. There's nothing but big rocks over there. We can make better time by... But... <laughs> all right, have it your way. Well, at least I can't complain that I found a son who has no will of his own. You know, Moana, we're going to have lots of fun together. I'm going to teach you... Mo- Moana, come back here. Moana, don't run away. Don't you know by now that I'm your friend? <laughs> He's a fast little devil, but I'll catch him. I'll catch him. It's the last thing I... Oh, I'm stopping. Moana, that's nothing but the hull of an old boat that must have been wrecked many, many... Skeletons. Two of them. What are you trying to tell me, Moana? Uh, all right, I'll, I'll have a look at them. There's no telling how long ago this boat was smashed against the rocks. I'd say these skeletons have been bleached by the sun for many years. What? Huh? Wedding rings. Twin wedding rings. Wait. Wait, I think I understand now, Moana. These, these whitened bones must have been your parents. Oh, be careful, Moana. Those boards are badly rotted. Now, stay right there. I, I, I want to have a look around here. There may be some clue to your identity here. Oh, no, there's nothing. If there ever was a name on the hull, it's gone now. Not a scrap of anything else to fill out your story. Well, I'll, I'll keep the rings until you're old enough to treasure them, Moana. All we can do now is to give them a decent burial... I'm, I'm sorry, Moana. Now I'll really have to be a father to you. The months passed rapidly, and the bond between Tarzan and the boy grew stronger and stronger with each passing day. Moana knew the secrets of the jungle almost as well as Tarzan, for he had fended for himself for many years. Together they swam in the deep lagoon, took long walks through the forest, hunted and fished, swung through the upper level and raised their voices in exultation. But Tarzan's efforts to teach his son indoor activities were not too successful. He no longer growled and he made no more than the average small boy's objections to washing, but he stubbornly refused to eat with a knife and fork and he made practically no progress in learning to talk. That's right, that's right. I'm Tarzan, and you are Moana. You are Moana. No, 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 you're Moana. Tarzan, Moana. Tarzan, Moana. Yes, now you've got it. Tarzan is Moana's father. Father. Good, good. Now let's try the whole sentence. Uh, Tarzan is Moana's father. Go ahead, just try it, huh? Tarzan is Moana's father. Oh, look, it's not worthwhile crying about. I only want to teach you to speak because... Well, because I love you, I, I want you to be able to... Oh, All right, all right, Moana, we'll let it go for now. Maybe we'll have another try at it after dinner, huh? Come on, Moana, wash your hands and... Then... Moana, what are you growling at? I thought you were over... Oh, oh, someone's coming, huh? I'm so busy trying to teach you. Just a moment. Nothing's going to happen to you now, Moana. Stop growling and be a good boy, huh? That's right, you just, you just sit on that bench there. Well? I beg your pardon. My bearers told me that you... There's something wrong. <laughs> oh, no. Pardon me for staring, will you? It's a little unusual for me to open my door and find a beautiful young white woman standing there. Will you come in? Thank you. Wait here, please. Nadio! Nadio! Do your bearers have food? Of course. 
And then they can build a fire and eat in the clearing. You're, you're just in time to join my son and me for dinner. That's very kind of you. And perhaps while we eat, you can tell me if you know anything about my brother, his wife, and son. They were shipwrecked that far from here about five years ago. Oh, no, please, Moana, that's Miss Hanley's meat. I'll give you more if you want some. Like it, Daddy. There you are, Moana. Oh, no, 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 not with your hands, please. He has all the instincts of an animal. Here in the jungle, we have great respect for the instincts of animals. Oh, I'm sorry. I merely meant... If, if it's all the same to you, we won't discuss my son any further, hmm? Miss Hanley, it seems strange to me that you waited five years before you decided to search for your brother and his family. Five years ago, I was 14 years old. I could hardly have come halfway around the world on my own, even if Father had given me the money. Well, it seems strange that he didn't come to find his own son and grandson. He did everything he could under the circumstances. He died last month, and I came here as soon as I was able to get some money from his estate. Of course, the estate can't really be settled until we know what happened to Tom and Norma and their child. Oh, I see. So your real interest is not in finding them, but in finding proof of their death so you can inherit all their money. Do you know something about what happened to them in their boat? Or not? I... I don't know. Many small craft have been wrecked on the African coast. It would be one chance in a million. What would be one chance in a million? Your being able to identify two rings I have put away over here. <laughs> don't growl at me, Moana. I won't hurt you. Can't we be friends? There are probably thousands of wedding rings like these made every day, but... Tom and Norma's rings, I'd know them anywhere. Tom had them made, and I went with him when he picked out the design. Tarzan, where did you find them? In, in the wreckage of their boat. They'd both been dead a long time when I happened to see the boat. Well, I'll, I'll sign some sort of a paper you can take back to settle your estate. And the baby, little Tommy. What about him? He... He was dead, too. I, I have some paper if you want me to, to... No. No. The money isn't important now. I don't know what I was hoping for after all these years, but... Somewhere in the back of my mind, I kept thinking that Tom and Norma had to be alive. I guess I was wrong about your motives in coming here. You, you loved them, didn't you? Everybody loved them. The crazy nuts. They were the most wonderful, crazy people in the world. Who else would have bought an old 40-foot boat and tried to go around the world in it? Just the three of them in a 40-foot boat? Yes. Tom called himself the skipper. Norma, the first mate. They called the baby the second mate. And they had a dog they called Crew. 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 He, he's crying for his dog, Miss Anne. I know. <laughs> I think I knew almost from the instant I walked in. He's the living image of Tom. I'm sorry I lied to you. I, I misinterpreted your motives in coming here, and I... Well, I didn't want to lose his son. I might have explained things more fully. Father had all sorts of searches made. You see, the reason Dad didn't come is that he had a stroke when the news of Tom's disappearance reached home. I've been taking care of him ever since then, and... No, I'd like to take the second mate home and care for him. He's happy in the jungle here with me. But he should have special teachers who know how to bridge those lost years, Tarzan. When he's had his chance, he can decide for himself whether he wants to live in civilization or return to the jungle. Will, will you come back, Moana? Will you come back to me? Tarzan. Father. Love. In just a moment, a preview of our next story of Tarzan. Deep in the heart of the Belgian Congo is the native village of Boua. During the day, it is like most other villages. The men hunt for meat, the women cook and sew, the children laugh and play. But at night, Boua becomes a place of fear. Men lie sleepless upon their mats, women quake in terror, and children cry out in their sleep. All of them wait for the dread coming of the Simba Hodari. Included in our cast were Jack Moyles, Virginia Gregg, and Dick Beals. Tarzan, a transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr. 
Prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Listen to our next story, Tarzan and the Simba Hoderi, another thrilling episode of The Lord of the Jungle. <laughs> 